Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of the Life X10 Show, or X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the new X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find a link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. For our first story, a high quality cohort study by Finnish scientists shows that today's elderly are in better physical and cognitive shape than people of the same age were a generation ago. The study uses baseline data from a 1989 to 1990 study which tested the physical and cognitive abilities of 500 Finns born in 1920 or 1914, so they're aged about 75 or 80 right now. The researchers then compared that data with new data from people born in 1938 to 1939 or 1942 to 1943. The comparison found that the later cohort showed markedly and meaningfully higher results in the maximal functional capacity tests, suggesting that currently 75 and 80 year old people in Finland are living to older ages with better physical functioning. However, there are still several caveats. For example, the more recent study had a response rate of only 44% versus 77% in the earlier one, so there may be self-selection bias. Another confounding factor could be that the people in the earlier cohort lived through two world wars and several periods of scarcity. In conclusion, we should also keep in mind that this data was gathered from only one city in Finland, so the results may not apply more broadly. For our next story, an international team has created an atlas for the various types of differentiated and stem cell populations found in our teeth. The researchers use RNA sequencing to characterize the genes being expressed in teeth. The researchers compared different regions within teeth, as well as human and mouse teeth, and teeth that are actively growing or not. The researchers were able to identify new markers for specific cell types and previously unknown factors involved in tooth regeneration and growth. This work improves our understanding of tooth biology and, in the long run, could help improve dental tissue engineering or tooth regeneration. If you want to learn more, the link is in the description below. Moving on, an $11 million grant from the United States National Institute of Aging will enable a team of psychologists to continue studying lifespan behavioral development and cognitive aging as individuals transition to mid-adulthood. The grant is to continue the Colorado Adoption Twin Study of Lifespan Behavioral Development and Cognitive Aging, or Cat's Life for short, which has already shown that the leading gene for Alzheimer's disease risk, APOE, is associated with child and adolescent IQ performance. The grant will allow the researchers to evaluate cognitive stability and change across the midlife transition in 1,400 participants from the Prospective Colorado Adoption Project and Parallel Longitudinal Twin Study. One of the grant participants, Chandra Reynolds, said, Preserved cognitive function may have roots in earlier life and be cultivated by activities and experiences as individuals approach and transition to midlife. Aging relevant factors are observed in earlier life that impact how we function into midlife and beyond. For our next story, Medin aggregates cause cerebrovascular dysfunction in mice. Medin is an amyloid of the protein MFG-E8. Medin is known to accumulate in the aorta and upper blood vessels of elderly people, but it's not known how this is linked with age-related dysfunction. Researchers in Germany and the United Kingdom investigated the question by knocking out the gene in mice. The researchers found that the engineered mice did not accumulate the Medin aggregates that were seen in normal mice. The mice arteries were better able to dilate and constrict, showing that Medin aggregates lead to vascular dysfunction, particularly age-related cerebrovascular dysfunction. The researchers suggest that targeting Medin may become a novel approach to sustain healthy aging, though obviously this study is a long way from that. For our final story, an international team has clarified the mechanism causing SIRT1 to decline during aging. The sirtuin genes are conserved across a wide range of species and are involved in cellular metabolism, immune response, and aging. 
First, the team checked SIRT1 RNA levels and found no change during cell senescence. This means that the decline is happening through protein degradation instead of changes in gene expression. The researchers found that the SIRT1 protein is broken down by autophagy. The researchers were also able to identify the autophagy protein which interacts with SIRT1, and even the specific sites on SIRT1 involved in the interaction. Finally, the researchers confirmed that the same process is at play in the organs of mice and in human T-cell cultures. Knowing how SIRT1 levels change opens the possibility of interventions to prevent it, which may be especially useful in dealing with immune cell aging. Now that the mechanism behind SIRT1 degradation has been worked out, researchers can work on understanding how it's regulated. That's all the news for this video. Before you go, there's a few free, quick, and simple things that you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already, please like this video, share this video on social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, and also if you haven't already, please make sure that you're subscribed and you have the bell turned to all notifications so that you don't miss any videos. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.